Well, I've been all over the country in one time or another, and I have never seen any town that kept its homogeneity from a period that far back as Rondout did. The architecture that was all torn down through urban renewal was mostly built pre- and post-Civil War. That's amazing. No tasteless eyesores in Rondout. It may have been what they called a slum, but to me, it was an absolute jewel. It was a close-knit community, and it was a very diverse community. You know, we had blacks, we had Jews, we had Italians, uh, you name it, they were there. Uh, racism as such was not really an issue. We didn't realize it at the time, but we were all poor. Everything was down there. They had cleaners, they had food stores, they had department stores, we had two banks. So we had everything in Rondell. We didn't have to go uptown. By the early 1960s, Rondout, the waterfront district of Kingston, New York, had fallen on hard times. The city came up with a plan to tear down the old buildings and replace them with a shopping center and new housing projects. One of the theories at the, at the time was that mixed-use buildings, residential and commercial, didn't work well. It created problems. People thought, okay, if you just wipe the slate clean and build beautiful new streets and parking and modern buildings, you're going to have a better society. Well, that was obviously the flawed foundations of urban renewal. Uh, it was an opportunity to cash in on what was a pot of gold for people, to, to get rid of buildings that weren't maintained. And to hell with the people in them, that wasn't the problem. It was, it was free money. And perhaps it was well intended, but really, in my opinion, just to cut to the chase, it resulted in a win-win situation for banks, contractors, real estate speculators, and slumlords. And there was no regard for the effect on human beings. The, the politicians stated that we're going to have new stores and new shops and new clean housing for everybody. The general consensus in the neighborhood was that we're not going to get any of this. More than 400 buildings comprising most of the commercial area were slated for demolition. Everywhere you could see a circle with a line through it, spray painted on, and it was like this sort of negative Passover. You know, like these were the things that were going to be torn down. They knocked them down like uh, several a week go down, and there were hundreds and hundreds of buildings, and, and it were literally thousands of people that were being dislocated. They weren't relocated. Going through this whole thing of why are they tearing the buildings down, you know, where are we going to go? Many people called it urban removal. Once the buildings were torn down, the new developers failed to arrive. I mean, the streets were basically there, and it was just streets and nothing. It was empty. And this went on for not just a year or two or three, 10 years, 12 years, nothing was down there. The buildings that were left were boarded up, and eventually artists, pioneer investors, and business owners bought the properties and renovated them. And I met numbers of people who had lived in the old part that was torn down, and they all were just, they were heartbroken. Many of them felt their families were displaced without proper payment. It was a mess, there was no question. But what they did in order to facilitate the flow of traffic and change the sort of pattern down here was that they not only demolished those buildings on the east half of Broadway, they also widened the street by double which violates one very basic principle of urban design, and it's, that's scale. I've seen photos of how it used to look with the similar buildings that I, like I'm in, the old historic um, commercial buildings across the street, and it looks like a commercial district. The two housing projects, which are located along the arterial highway that was built where the old city stood, segregate the affordable housing from the rest of the city. I think the, the poverty here kind of separates you from the rest of the city. Uh, there's a certain amount of shame about living here. I, I noticed that. It's like the other side of the tracks, in a way, literally. If I had been a city father in the 1960s, I might well have voted in favor of urban renewal. But with perfect hindsight, it was a terrible mistake. Yeah.
yesterday. Yeah.